welcome to a new episode of Online Business English from non-native English speakers. It can be quite challenging to start your own online business. You need to have your website set up, all the systems, you need to learn a ton of new things, and then you need to make sure that clients come in, that they are able to find you, and that they purchase from you. As a non-native English speaker, there is one more thing that needs your attention. Your level of English may or may not be what you like it to be, or you might not be happy with the way you are able to express yourself. I have started a group. We have a Facebook group and we have weekly webinars. We do not only go over English grammar, expressions and statements, the jargon. We also make sure that we go into mindset and self-expression. You learn how to accept your accent, to embrace your background, the sooner and the better you're able to go within the sooner and better you're able to bring out into the world what's truly yours. And I have pressed recording. Welcome everyone to webinar number, what is it? It's the official webinar number one, but we've come together a couple times. So it's, it's unofficially webinar number two or three, if you include the, the brainstorm. I think three. Number three, okay, let's go for three. Yeah, let's build yep. legacy right away. Yeah, we deserve it, didn't we? We had an interview in between. We've been active all together. Um, like we said, some of us have met up. Um, Frank, I was so honored to meet you on Momentum Day in London. That was very much fun. Um, yeah, so if we look at, if we look back at the, the brainstorm that a couple of us were in and then the very first webinar that was about how, what do we like to get out of this? And then last week we had the interview with Christian. Anything, anything that you like to share that you've been doing because of you watched all those things? Have you been listening to book, uh, to audio books? Have you been listening and watching movies? Have you been reading books? What did you take from the interview with Christian? Anything that you like to share? This is your moment. Uh, I would like to share uh, an English phrase that I heard last week. Yes, go for it. Um, um, England, uh, you know it, of course. Uh, we have a saying at mess night on two kanten. Yes. And uh, Alex Eastman used uh, uh, a sentence in the brand incubator last week, and it's called a double-edged sword. A double-edged sword. Can you yes. explain what it means? The sword cuts on both sides. That's um, Yes, and that's almost literally the translation of what we say in Holland. Um, there's, there are always two sides to a story. That's, in, uh, that's the basic principle that is explained with the, with the saying. The double-edged sword. I thought it sounded great and I immediately understood what he meant. But I thought it was a nice one to mention it here. Very, very nice. Thank you very much. Anything else that people came across that was new to them, but because we're now focused on how we, how we can improve our English is worth sharing with the rest. If not, that's also, that's also fine. I just like to get into the mindset of being aware of new things that we come across. Hi, Anila. Hi. Thank you very much for joining. Um, so to Anila and Monica, um, I would like to ask you to change your name. So if you hover over your own face, you see three dots in the upper right corner. If you click on rename, I would like you to add the country that you're in to your name so everybody can see where everybody is from. In the meantime, so I was just saying, I like us to be in the mindset of um, be more receptive to things that we come across in the English language and to think for ourselves, is this something I can use in my flow of speech? That's the topic of today. Is this something I um, would like to know the meaning of? Is this something I could use? Because I often talk about stuff and I like to ex express myself in a way that's more, um, that speaks more to people uh, instead of using a thousand and one words to try to explain this one concept. Is there anything that you... Yes, Katrien? Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm so pleased with this group because now I'm uh, very motivated to be even more aware of the language I write and uh, also I, well, I mean, we speak Danish here, but I've just went to Momentum, so... <laughs> 
but I, what I have, uh, I re, uh, re, uh, view my, my slides and I actually work even deeper with, with the language I use. And what I also have uh, discovered that works very well for me is, you know, Google. Oops. I think she's trying to say Google. It's a little function where you can make it um, read up your text. Katrin, I'd like to ask you to, to repeat the very last part about Google because okay. uh, the line. Yeah. Uh, when you enter Google Translate from, from the Google sign, not go into it directly, but I think you can do it as well. Also. But I, I put in my English text and then make it um, be read by Google. You know, there's a little uh, loudspeaker you can press so it, it reads up your text. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out who is making noise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you, you were saying Google Translate or? Yeah, I, 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 I don't use Google to translate my text. I use Ginger and uh, all my word the dictionaries. I have, we, we have always had a lot of dictionaries. So, but uh, then I make, I put in my text in the Google uh, Translate box where I make it read out loud my text because I have listened more than I have been speaking English, <laughs> uh, so it's easier to to hear when it's not correct than it is to maybe catch it on the text. Um, so, so that actually uh, is also a technique that that works uh, quite well. Uh, if anybody can use that as well, uh, I think that's an excellent tip and. Can I ask you to now, during the webinar, um, provide us with a link and then put it in the chat? Yes, it's, it's just, just when you Google, Google, Google Translate in, in, the, in your browser. Google Translate. But I can, yes, I can, I, can make a, I can try and make a little uh, screen uh, show and, and post. That could be a little challenge to me as well. Sure, <laughs> come for it this week. Why not? Um, yeah. I have some more exercises lined up for this webinar and I'm very excited to show you all. So I envision this group not to be a, just a sharing group, but I also would like to give out some exercises, some things to do, some games, so we can actually practice what we preach. Um, on that note, I'm going to look at my notes that I made here. Um, did someone get inspired by someone about learning the English language? David, you're shaking your head. I'm going to unmute you. you. Would you like to... Share with us. Well, it's been too busy for me to um, to do anything, so I almost did nothing for uh, as of them this week. Almost. Okay. Did you get inspired in general last week? Um, let me think. I, know, I know you do yoga every week. Yeah, true. That's always uh, my steady thing, and that's helped me a lot. Yeah, that's really uh, a good thing to do to keep uh, my mind at ease. So. Um, if you're uh, too busy with uh, too much things, that's really uh, a good practice to do, the yoga. And also for mind and body and the stretching is always a good thing to uh, keep your body healthy. But for my mind, it's really uh, something I need to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing anyway. I think the fact that you just spoke in English is going to inspire yourself and it's going to help you. That's why I called you out. <laughs> Because you were shaking your head no, and that we don't take no for an answer, do we? So thank you very much. Um, so I have some things lined up that I'd like to share with you. And the topic is flow of speech. And to start, I'd like to show you a short video. Share a screen. Let me see if this works. And it does. Can you all see my screen? Can I see thumbs up if you can see my screen? Awesome. Okay, I'll start this video. Hi guys, it's Jessica again. And in this video, I want to ask you, what is the SFM doing for you? 
since you've joined, how much have you changed? How much have you been able to build your persona, to build character? Um, how do you view the world differently now? I can now honestly say, because I joined DSFM, I am able to move to Barcelona, which is obviously amazing. But I am very aware of all the steps that I have been taken in the last seven to eight months to be able to move to Barcelona next month. And does this mean that it's the end of my SFM journey? No. Um, does this mean I have a sustainable and a financially healthy online business, an affiliate business? No, that's, that's not the case at all. There's two people watching me. Hi, I can't see who you are, I'm sorry. Um, but what happened is I joined end of May, beginning of June, and um, I was working with this charity in um, Liverpool. And I wanted to create a second income stream. Hi, Edith. Hello. Um, I want to create a second income stream because I work with a charity. Um, and that wasn't really good money. So what I did because of the SFM and because of everything that we learn about self-worth and being a leader and um, stepping up basically for yourself and showing up in your own life, I decided to ask for a pay rise, which I then got, which was a huge step into I am becoming financially successful. Um, but it wasn't quite the money that I was hoping for. So, hey, Andrew. Hey, Sarah. Hello. Um, so it wasn't quite the money that I was hoping for. So eventually that resulted in me quitting my job. Um, and that happened in... Okay, so I'll stop sharing my screen now. And I'd like to ask you who, uh, a thumbs up. Oh, hi, Judith. Thank you for joining. Amazing to see you. I, where are you? Well, if you hover over your own face, you did. You see three dots in your upper right corner. There you can rename your screen. And I'd like to add you, um, I'd like you to add your country to your own picture. That's nice for people to know. Um, my question to all of you is, whoever watched this little video, this little clip, who thought, like thumbs up for people who thought this was, uh, in terms of flow of speech, this was acceptable. This was like, this was going smoothly. Okay. Anyone who likes to come out and, and say something about this? Anila. Please share what you have to say to this. So when I watched the video, I felt it was very clear. It was very concise. The fact that you're a non-native didn't bother me at all. You were very to the point and you came across authentic, confident and relaxed. And I think for all the non-natives, for me, that's a key. To, feel, to come across confident and relaxed about what you're saying. And in order to do that, you have to be relaxed and comfortable with who you are. So that then that portrays across on the other side. Thanks very much. Uh, that's a load of compliments. Um, the purpose of me showing this video is not to receive the compliments. The purpose of me showing this video is that I have counted the amounts of ums in my own video. Oh yes. But, and, but do you see that they don't seem very relevant though? They don't come across as something which is um, very striking because we all have ums in our speech, especially when you're put on the spot like that, because you've got to think on your feet. But I think if you have the idea of what you're going to say in your mind, these things are not really noticed all that much. I did notice that, but I didn't feel that it needed to be you know, it, it came across very strongly, not at all. So my point, that's exactly my point. Because in, in two weeks ago in the webinar, people wanted to lessen their ums. They yeah. felt that, that um is, is seen as a sign of lack of knowledge, lack of vocabulary, lack of confidence, lack of um, 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 ability to speak, to speak yeah. in a very fluent way. This whole video, 
Well, I'm gonna, up until minute four, there were 25 ums. Yes. The entire video were 61 ums. <laughs> it, was, it was an incredible amount of ums. And I now wanna go into, a, maybe first, who feels that they say too many, uh, that they use too many ums? I I'm see Catherine that. waving, I see Ruth, Ruth, Ruth's hands go up. Bruno, okay. It is what, and the, I agree with Anila. The the um, we we should stop thinking that this is a sign of um, lack of um. capability. <laughs> um, like I use it all the time. It I is. Said not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I use it all the time. But I've been thinking. I've been. I've been focusing on this because I thought, okay, this is this is a good topic to start off with. People people want to talk about this and want to improve this. I think there's one activity that can help us, uh, one little trick that can help us uh, decrease the ums that we use. Every time you want to say um, because you're thinking of something, you're trying to express, you're trying to find the words. And like Anila says, everybody tries to find the words. Like nobody's gonna, even the, like, unless you script it and unless you're an actor or unless you're a presenter, you work on this, but normal people don't, don't work on this and use ums. I want to do an exercise now that is going to make you aware of how to lessen your ums. Every time you want to say um, you do this. You close your mouth and you think in silence. Okay, so we're going to do a little exercise. I am going to ask a question to each and every one of you. You can use two ums. After the third um, you're out and moving on to the first one. Yeah, it's this, after, after the second um. Yeah? Davy, I'm just gonna start with you because you're in my left top corner and I'm just gonna go over my screen. So you're the first one. I am going to ask you, Um, how did you like your daily walk do you still do daily walks do you walk every day yeah i do what what went through your mind today on your daily walk not much there was a short walk it was uh, too cold and windy to go outside but still it's um one <laughs> They cut a lot of trees on the side here, and that still was um, two times. <laughs> yeah, you're out, you're out, but well done! Yay! <laughs> okay, that. you're up next. I am going to unmute you now and unmute, yeah. And my question to you is you've watched on demand. What was the most uh, interesting or inspiring presentation for you? Actually, nothing. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. The whole video you didn't like? No, no. Really, this was too emotional. I don't like it. I'm always happy. What part was emotional for you? Uh, That's one of <laughs> JJ? JJ, what about JJ? He was too emotional. What was too emotional about JJ? He was always uh, like... his. Well done for closing your mouth and thinking in silence. Amazing. You're doing a great job. He is on the edge of yes. crying. Of crying. Yes. He tends to put his heart and soul in whatever he says and to bring across his message from the bottom of its heart yeah I totally agree 
Everybody an applause for Aldona because she only said one um and I wanna um um I wanna focus on something else because she said like. <laughs> Another thing you can do to lessen your ums is to say like instead, if you're thinking like X, Y, Z, and then she went like X, Y, Z. It's another thing how you can um, connect your sentences. I saw Anila's hand go up and Tracy's hand go up. So we should, yeah, Anila, go for it. So these ums and ours and what have you they're kind of like um filler words when you're transitioning from one idea to another so what um aldona is that how you pronounce your name <laughs> sorry yeah so what was very good about aldona was that she actually did the correct thing rather than say um she paused she thought and then she answered and that's the that's a very good idea to stop those filler words is just to pause for a second, regain your thoughts and then go back into it. And you'll find that when you start again, you'll start more powerfully. So I just wanted to say, well done. Well done. Yes, I totally agree. Well done, Aldona. And thank you, Anita, for adding to that. Uh, Tracy. So I wanted to say there was a very interesting uh, video that I happened to catch by, uh, I think it was Camelia. Camelia had, uh, oh, see, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> she, she put out a video actually talking about this very subject in that people do say, um, of course, there's, you know, the excessive, but she was commenting that there's, there there is that genuine and authentic because if you're just talking and having a talk with somebody those things do come up and i don't know in your languages like is there something similar that you do or say that would be an interesting thing and maybe to start catching yourself in your own language first because it's all about awareness more or less right and as anila very well put you know, we do that in our own native languages when we're not knowing. And the better thing to do so that sh what happens is you keep saying, um, um, and ah, uh, th then all of a sudden your the confidence level and what that person is saying, it starts to deplete, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's that, there, there is that, there is confidence in a silence. It's okay, you know? It actually shows that you're putting thought into what you're saying. So maybe I would say that one of the things to think about is to become aware of it in your own language because, you know, how, how the Satori Prime guys say, how you do one thing is how you do everything else, you know? So, so looking at that and bringing conscious awareness to how do you speak in your own language? How often do you do it there and start doing that? Because if you, in your mother tongue, if you bring that, then, then it's going to transfer over, you know, into, to your other language. Um, I see, I just said it, but <laughs> the other thing I wanted to comment in your video, which was well done was the difference in, uh, UK and the States. We say a pay raise or just, we just call it a raise. I asked for a raise. So just to bring those little differences that, you know, that happen. Is because it pay just, rise in British English? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Because I had it as a pay raise, and then I heard Dan Holloway at some point say pay, pay rise, and I thought, oh, I need to change yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's all the British-influenced ones do it <laughs> that way, and the Americans just say a raise. They, so a lot of times, one. yeah, a lot of times we don't even say pay rate. I mean, it's understood. I'm asking for a raise. Well, you need to ask for a raise, okay. point blank. That's it. Just, just to give that, you know, difference there. Thanks. No problem. Thanks. I think another good idea is also to perhaps record yourself, like Tracy said, that if you identify it in your native language, you can kind of become more aware of it. So perhaps even record yourself speaking, play it back, and then count how many of those fillers do you find. I think that's a really good tip. I think this is also the power of the 90 day video journey. This is your journey. This is how, where you started. This is where you need to go. Along the way, you're gonna see improvement. I'm, to do, I'm doing the 90 day video journey now for the second time. Many people do. 
If you're not doing it, uh, join us. It's very powerful. And this is the most safe environment you can think for. Think of, think of. Okay. Um, shall we continue with this game a little longer? Is that okay? Is there someone who wants to go or definitely does not want to go? Davy says, oh no, raise, no, raise, yeah, raise. Yeah, so yeah, in, in, in American, it's almost like it sounds like a Z because it's a pay raise, yeah. a raise, yeah. you know. Um, Rosemary, would you like to answer a question for me? Yes, yes, please. My question to you is, what did you have for lunch today? I beg your pardon, I didn't hear what you said, <laughs> sorry. What did you what? have for lunch today? What did you eat? What did I have for lunch today? I had, um, um no. Okay, okay, go for it. <laughs> What's it called in English? Grateng. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> That's two. I suck at this. Uh, That's well, well. fine. That's fine. Let's continue. Um, you know. We're always getting better. Not suck. We're yeah. always getting better. We, we embrace sucking at something because that's where we grow. Lean into it. Kina, what was the weather like in Norway today? Today it's quite um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of snow. We have uh, had a couple of days with a very cold winter, minus twenty degrees. So it's you used cold. you just used four ums, and mm. they, like the last two were so part of your sentence. Mm -hmm. that I think we mm -hmm. can't count them as a distracting. I didn't even uh, notice. <laughs> just it, it is part of your speech. Yeah. So that's what Tracy just touched upon. It is part mm -hmm. of your speech. It is how you link your sentences together. And yeah. all I think we need to do is be aware of this and, and work on maybe other things in our language that can prevent the amount of ums, but the, the ums that are there to express something and to have a conversation with i think we should leave them i think it's totally fine yeah. well <laughs> great thanks for answering the question thank you <laughs> anila go for it i think um again picking up on the um the people that we've just watched so far i think a really really good idea would be to enrich yourself with just a little bit more vocabulary so that you because sometimes we can't express or we use this quick um because A, we're nervous. And secondly, the words are not there. And when you have to think on your feet, it becomes hard. So really try to, um, you know, have some more vo vocab. Like I'm going through a couple of videos in the week, just giving some basic vocabulary with the meaning because the, the more words you have in your mind, it will reduce those ums. And, and again, another thing maybe is, um, I know it's difficult, but perhaps try to think in English as opposed to think in your native language. That might help too. Um, <laughs> I think that's a very, I just wrote down that next week's topic could be around uh, vocabulary in, um, the area that we're in online businesses digital marketing all that kind of stuff and what i've been meaning to do what i didn't get the time to do is to create a sheet so we can all add on to that sheet i will do so later today or tomorrow and then next week we can go into um vocabulary and anila you already have been sharing videos with uh, words around feelings, uh, how you like, and, and a couple of them that I also want to include, and then we can have that as um, the training material for next week. I think it's a nice follow up on this week's. Definitely. Webinar. And you know, it's like identify the areas. So, for example, if we are creating an ad, we're going to have 
pain points. We're going to have our own pain points that drove us into this business. So think about all the vocabulary around that. Think about the reasons why you came into SFM. Think about what SFM did for you as a person again enrich the vocabulary there and think about the what sfm could do for the person you're trying to connect with connect with and again the more words you have the more powerful your message will come across yes i definitely agree and that's what we're here for frank i think you're up frank i want to know from you your your thoughts on your own ex your own performance on stage last week saturday on momentum day i knew you was going to ask me that but before i answer that question i really want to address something because i'm looking into a lot of stuff on youtube from top performers and really the the big influences like elon musk and peter diamandis and these people speak on stage using terms one after the other, right? But they still get their message across. Yes. So I want to encourage you to not shut your mouth because you think, oh my God, I'm just saying terms and my message doesn't come across. Just open your heart, speak from the heart, and your message will be felt because people will in most cases forget anyway what you tell them but they will never forget how you make them feel yes that's way more important than the words you use that's way more important than the vocabulary we use um yeah <laughs> that was my first yes very well done that's like a whole book with only one um yeah <laughs> But the thing is, in my, in my daily life as, uh, what can I say, as coach, now strategic, uh, well, there's my second one, strategic customer focus team, that's how Jill and I call ourselves now, we, we, we get to speak English every day on, on a daily basis, and that's why my English has so massively improved. And it's just, um, just take a look at Anila now. I mean, I know her from the day one. And what she's doing now is so absolutely incredible. I'm really mind blown for what she's, what she's doing here because she was so afraid of speaking up. She was so afraid of coming in front of the camera. And this is like, I really, Anila, you're such a leader now. You're stepping into leadership. You, you're stepping into your greatness. And I'm so grateful to see this. I'm so grateful that you want to give back that way. And you, uh, you no longer are in your own way. That's awesome. That's an inspiration to all of us. And that's achievable for all of us, right? It was just two and a half months ago. I mean, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It was only three, no, two weeks ago when I was in tears with Frank because I came to maybe day, day 15 in my video journey, which I'm finding extremely difficult. And there was a day where I couldn't speak. Every time I'd switched the, phone, the camera on, the words wouldn't come out. I just felt I had this block and I thought that was the end of the road for me. I thought everything I had built myself up in the last three months, I thought, that's it. I can't do this. Yeah. And I cried so much that day that when we had our meeting with Frank, even though I, I tried to hide it, I just couldn't. But then you've got to just start. You've just got to start again. You've got to wake up and you think, okay, why am I here? Mm. What do I want from this? And you've got to think, no, I'm going to try again and again and again. And it's the same with the language barriers. You've just got to keep on trying. And look, you will improve. I promise you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Anila. Do you maybe want to elaborate on what it was that held you back? Held me back, sorry. Yes. Um, um, <laughs> for me, it's my confidence that really, really holds me back because I think I have self-limiting beliefs that I can't offer anything to anybody. I feel that, um, that perhaps, you know, I may be judged because of who I am, mm. but my heart's in the right place. And I want to help 
as many people as I can. That drives me and that brought me back. That's what helps me go through these painful experiences. For example, the 90 day video journey is a very big painful experience for me to have to, it's like I'm, I'm always stressed out. Oh, I've got to do my video. But no, the Momentum Day changed everything. Look at, if you look back at my video, those 12, 13 minutes, the urns, it's full of it. But like Frank said, it's about the message from the heart. It's about sharing what you believe in, sharing your truth, sharing your passion. And that's what's going to resonate with everybody. And that's it. It doesn't matter how broken your English is, how many urns and ahs. Like I said, when I watched you in the first video, yes, you had lots of urns. They didn't bother me at all. Yeah. I didn't even notice them, to be honest, Jessica. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I didn't even notice one single urn. Oh, so that's I, a powerful I, message. I guess that's why I wanted to show this message, uh, this video, because it is something in our head that we think we need to um delete and we need to yeah. work on this and it's difficult and because yeah. we are non-natives we use the ums and that's a disadvantage so i showed this video because there are 61 ums in that video <laughs> and that's also why i didn't ask you guys to count them because i wanted to know if you would like hear them and anila did and i did i did ask anila to come on this call as a support so she would i think she was a little bit more focus on the quality and the, the speech and the flow of speech and everything. Um, but for the rest, nobody was like, oh, there were so many um. So that was that was the little trick and, and, and the, the purpose of that video. Yeah. I think we've now had a couple of conversation about this and I think we can distinguish two types of ums. Ums that link your sentences together and that are helping and supporting your flow of speech. And there's ums out of insecurity and out of a lack of knowledge of words. I think that's what we can work on. But maybe my message is don't be too hard on yourself. Ums are fine. If you feel that you use ums because you don't know words, it's not the problem. But ums are not the problem. The vocabulary is the problem. And that's what Anila also said. And that's what Tracy touched upon. Find ways that in your own language, how, how do you deal with, with the ums? How did you decrease those ums you you learned uh, like in your life along the way you learn more and more things about more and more things you learn how to express things so think of the digital marketing and the online business world as the same thing you didn't know how to walk in one day you didn't know anything about digital marketing in one day give yourself some time to get acquainted with the jargon and with the words and therefore you can lesser your ums it will go automatically um um <laughs> so we, um <laughs> i i did want to jump on there with that too just again to to accentuate the positive with all of you guys being here and doing this and you know myself knowing how it is living in another country when you don't speak the language so i i totally get that and I think you you know like she was saying and I'm gonna find that video and I'm gonna put paste it in this so you can see it because you know, she speaks exactly about that about the, she doesn't care you know I, I'm not gonna care about the ums you know and uh, see <laughs> smile I was just gonna say that I'm like when you catch yourself do it doing it instead of getting down on yourself instead of you know ah, I did it again and that's why I say start looking and being aware of what you do in your own language how often are you doing it when are you doing it is it about a transition like she's saying or is it about finding the word because even in our own languages we're trying to you know explain something and i want to find the right word to do that and even in our own languages we sit there for a moment to think about it so for you to go through the Rolodex and have to think what the word is in your own language and then change it to the other language, I totally get that. But don't be so hard on yourself. Do the smile when you um, just smile, just make it into a um, and then think about it, take a breath. And from there, I would just say, know that for the Americans, sorry, there's, 90% of them don't speak another language, okay? So for, for they don't, and they don't even bother, okay? So for you to be speaking to them, the majority of them are going, 
to be always impressed that you speak their language because they could never speak yours. Okay. And they're, and, and, and they have, you know, the majority of them, 0%, you know, they may, Oh, I always wanted to speak French or I've always wanted to speak Italian, or I should probably learn Spanish because where I work and the, the, the people I work with, but they don't. So, you know what, give yourself a pat on the back for that, that you're in this space doing this, doing what you're doing and the knowledge that you already have. Okay. And that's about like, what Anita was saying about with confidence we forget all the things that we have learned we forget the things where we're at and I know you know people in your family and friends who don't have their English is not as well as yours okay so look at that and always telling yourself I'm always getting better every day and like Frank said it's about using it all the time and that idea of going to a university doing some some conversation exchange with a university student who may be studying your language, okay? Look for those opportunities to do that. If you know where Americans hang out, go over there, you know? I don't know about your piazzas and stuff, but like when I lived in Italy, there were places that were always known where Americans hang out. So, you know, go there, strike up a conversation, you know, just start chit-chatting, okay? Thank you very much. I want to I want to add to this quickly because I, I think it's really valuable what what Tracy said and I actually used a tool on stage I want to share with you and I, I want to go to that vulnerable place because I also want to answer that question and not be like a polit politician and just bypass that question so um, this is this is how it went JJ was saying something along the lines of there are two people in this room. In this moment, I looked over to Jill and I was like, please don't say my name. Please don't say my name. <laughs> Too late. We were summoned on stage and I literally started shaking the moment I got up off my chair and the whole room disappeared for me. I just saw, saw JJ and Jill in front of me. And I got so nervous, my heart was racing, 250 beats per minute, I would say, at least. And on stage, Jill started first, having her, her talk and saying thank you. And then while she was talking, and that's, I'm not kidding, my left leg went to the left side. That's how hard I was shaking. And my right leg went to the right side, right? And I leaned over to Jill and I was like, is this stage moving? I really felt like this. And while she was talking, in my head, I had the fear going on that, who am I to say something? What, what am I going to say? She said everything. Like my ego wanted to take me out like this. And if you don't have the tools to overcome that fear and tell yourself that this is actually not fear, but excitement that you're feeling, and you're, you're going into that fear state by choice, then... Your, your fear can take you out. And if Jill would have given me the microphone, let's say a minute earlier, I would have stumbled on stage and said, uh, okay, uh, um, yeah, thank you. And give her the microphone back. But I remembered a tool that we always use. It's, it's so simple, but it was very effective and saved my life on stage. It's a five second rule. You count down five, four, three, two, one. And by counting, you distract your, your crazy reptilian mind from taking you into fear, giving your mind a job of just counting down, distracting that. And you can, you can, in that moment, you escape to your heart and you just speak from your heart. And this is exactly what happened on stage. I can't even remember what I said on stage. It was like a download. But this is what really happened on stage that nobody saw. Thank you. Um, um, <laughs> I, think, I think that's a great share. I think everybody needs to read the book or listen to the book Five Second Rule. And um, now, we're, now we're talking about solutions. I want to add something as well. If you catch yourself saying, um, because you are looking for the words, you can also fill the void with let me think of the words. Um, let me think of the words. Um, what's that expression again? Um, bear with me a second. 
those are things that you can say instead of saying um three more times and it is indeed distracting your mind from insecurity danger um looking like a fool and therefore you're not able to focus on the things that you actually want to say but you're thinking of what do i look like is my face going red is my hand hand going sweaty am i shaking are my legs going in different ways all those things you start to notice and therefore the the arms are going to be accumulated because you're not able to focus on the actual thing that you deep down know how to express but you're just distracted so you need to, to distract your mind from going into negative things what what frank just tried to say so counting back from five to one definitely is a really really strong tool or verbalize the fact that you're looking for the words to express yourself um I will make sure that I will I've I've made some notes and I will I will make sure that with the recording of this webinar I will give all the points that we've discussed as well so you you can either watch it back or you can just look at what we discussed all of it okay I am looking at the time and we have um, 45 minutes left originally I had one more topic that I wanted to touch upon in terms of flow of speech and that is prefixes and suffixes these are things you put in front of after a word that you like to use and it means the opposite of what you of the words that you so if you say i like dogs you can say i don't like dogs or you can say no dogs make me feel sad or bad or makes me anxious but you can also say i dislike dogs so this is then a prefix to like and it's much quicker um, and it's going to help you express yourself easier um, and more fluently without needing to express your feelings in a way that's using up too many words because you don't know it, it's just an easy and a quick tip um, on how to express yourself and increase your flow of speech i have dug up a youtube video on prefixes and suffix and i would like to share with you the first two to three minutes if that's okay can i see thumbs up if that's okay with you guys who likes to um because I, we've we've discussed um for 45 minutes which is quite a tell on the virus i think so i i would like to touch upon something in addition so the value goes up of this of this webinar okay i am going to share screen uh share screen and then i am going to pull up that video can everybody see the video can i see thumbs up or my screen so yeah okay cool vid.com i'm adam today's lesson is a bit of a strange lesson i'm going to tell you something that you can't actually learn well you can learn it there's just no rules for it i'm talking about specifically some prefixes this un in im il ir non okay first of all let's review a little bit what is a prefix a prefix is a little part of a word that comes before the main word. It can come before an adjective, before an adverb, before a noun, before a verb. Like anything that comes before a word, and especially before a root of a word. We're going to look at an example of that very soon. So I was asked specifically to talk about these prefixes. All of them basically mean not. Okay they negate the word they are added to now generally speaking you can find specific little subtle differences between all of them for example this means more like be a part of or away from separate un means not or a reversal of something or uh, not having something a lack of something a deprivation and same with these guys not reverse opposite non is the most simple one non basically means not okay but the problem is that most of these can go with many words but there's no real rule about which word takes which prefix okay 
So how do you learn which one to use in which situation? Well, I'll tell you after we look at a few examples, okay? So again, all of these mean not. The only thing you have to worry about the most is the actual word that is being connected to a prefix, okay? Concentrate on the root or the word itself before you concentrate on which prefix to join to it. Now, you will see that some words will take both prefixes and be totally okay. The problem is that their meanings are completely different. So to dislike, this is a verb, to dislike, it could also be a noun. I have a strong dislike for certain vegetables, for example, but to dislike means to not like. Now, if you say, I don't like pizza, and you say, I dislike pizza, these are a little bit different, right? Don't like or not like means you don't have a good feeling towards. But dislike means you actually have a bad feeling towards, right? So this is a little bit more active. You're away from liking it. You're actually having a bad feeling for it. Unlike has absolutely no connection to dislike. Unlike means not similar to. This is the preposition like. A is like B. This is the verb like, means to have a good feeling toward. So concentrate on the, on the word you have. You have the verb, you have the preposition. And then decide which prefix you want to join to it. So here I have a few examples. Okay, I'm going to leave you with this. It is worth watching the whole video, I think. And it is a very uh, great topic in terms of flow of speech. These are things I am not really good at. This is something I will need to study. And this is something I will need to familiarize myself with because I realize that this is going to help my flow of speech as well. Um, we have five minutes left, so there's not much room for us to go into this topic um, 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 very extensively, if that's a word. I would like to ask Tracy and Anila to say something about this and to share their experience. And I would like to close off with a little, little bit of homework. I want to challenge you and invite you to make a video where you use ums, not because you don't know the words, but be simply because they connect your sentences, where you use as many prefixes as possible. Okay? So, Anila, please come out. Okay, so I think it's a, a fantastic idea with the, um, the suffix and the prefix. My concern is that when we, when English is not our first language and to start going into grammatical structures and try to teach yourself how sentences are structured and how um, a prefix and a suffix kind of like comes together, connects and, and helps you with, the, uh, with what you're trying to say is fantastic. But to be able to even get to grips with that terminology, it might be hard. So what, what might be a good idea, instead of going through uh, what a prefix is and what a suffix is and how it helps you with your, your to, to give words to make this as simple and easy as possible so for example I'm focusing on feelings at the moment perhaps later or perhaps you Yiska we, you can come up with a list of prefix and suffix examples that you can immediately use in their English I think that's a great idea I definitely will do so let's connect about that Anila uh, I, I, want, I just wanted to make people aware of the prefix yeah. and suffix. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Just play with it. Not to go into the grammatical structure, but just play with it and see if there's things that you can discover that you then can use within your speech. Because when we're speaking, we, we don't sometimes, um, you know, break it down to, okay, what's a preposition? What's an adverb? What's a, and it, it might be a little bit overwhelming. That's all I'm saying. I think. Yeah, don't overwhelm yourself. Don't overwhelm really yourself. Simple. Yeah. And like I said, the, the, the journal is, it's, 
very important. If you keep a journal and add only one word a day, in 30 days, you will know 30 more words that you didn't know 30 days ago. Can you imagine how many words you will uh, know or how many, whatever you're trying to, anything little you pick up, a phrase or when you're watching the webinars, watch them with intent of getting things down, write things down. I do that even now as an English speaker. And soon you'll see that in, in even just 30 days, just do it. Keep a journal and see how much you improve. It's unbelievable. Honestly, can't stress that enough. Yeah. Thanks very much, Tracy. So I, a little perspective, I totally see what <coughs> Anelia is saying. And I, I would agree about trying to get too much with the, you know, what's a preposition, what's a this, that. But what I can do, I can offer to help is, I think it is helpful because when people do know that you can use these prefixes and suffixes, they can, all of a sudden you've almost doubled your vocabulary, right? Because now you, you, if you know that you could do that, then you could go both ways. So I think it's valuable. I will uh, go ahead and look online. I, I'm not trying to say that you guys are at this level, but it's a lot easier a lot of times for finding stuff for children. So like ESL, for, you know, children uh, who were like usually Spanish speakers who were over. And um, so getting that kind of stuff. So it's not so much about that was a preposition. This was an adjective that, you know, getting into that, but it's just like showing and, and having a simple chart like that. And, uh, and what I was going to say too, cause Aldana, I saw her post about trying to find for emotions. Maybe we can, I don't know if there's a place in the Facebook page where we could put these resources. Yes, I will. That, you know, will that we've been starting to get because, yeah. you know, she can see that and it's down in the feed, but maybe we can make a little area yeah. that becomes a reference that people can take out these things so they can have them available. Yeah. And I will, I will just, yeah. Yeah. And I will just jump on what um, Anina said that is very helpful because that's how I improved my Italian living in Italy. I didn't know any, I didn't know a lick of Italian. I knew spaghetti and <laughs> fettuccine and that was it. So for me teaching in English learning because I had to look at every single word and I looked up every word that my lesson plan I was writing in it what was the Italian word so just by the writing and putting that attention there and when you and and like it could be a tiny little book but when you're on the webinars too I want to encourage again put I, you know, I saw somebody questioning. That's why I put um, excitement in there. I, I saw their face and I actually saw them saying excitement, you know, throw it in there, throw it in there, Go, throw it in the chat. You guys, the, the, the community helps. They know that there's, you know, it, I will go ahead and make a announcement too. just go, if you want to, we could both do that, put it on there on the tribe that we're asking them to help too, right? We're yeah. always trying to help each other with all of our skills. It doesn't just stop at marketing skills, okay? We're here about mindset skills. We're here about, you know, anything that about anything. And with this too, we're here to help you. If we have this knowledge, it is up to us as well to share it with you. But like everything else that we're all having to learn is we have to learn to ask. So just throw it in there. Just throw it in the thing and go, what is, you know, I heard, what does that mean? Somebody will jump on. Somebody will jump on and tell you, okay? So that you don't have to keep going. But yeah, have that little book there. Because like, like Anelia said, then you've learned that many more. Because my, my Italian's way better than my Spanish. And it's because I had to do that with the vocabulary because I was teaching in Italy and I wasn't in Spanish. So I just got by with what I knew and threw out Italian words when I didn't know. So... <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, I I like to encourage everyone to, even though you think you're interrupting the webinar, you're not. We're we're here to help each other out, and we're flexible. I was flexible today with my with, with my agenda, and I think it's a great idea to go into prefixes and suffixes if we do vocabulary next week. So I just want to take this topic with us to next week and then alongside uh, knowing more more and more words see how we can use the prefix and the suffixes and make our flow of speech uh, better and improve that and for now the homework maybe just focus on words like like dislike agree disagree instead of i don't agree use the word disagree that's the level that we're at and i think it's a nice little piece of homework it's a nice little 
way to stay focused on what you like to improve. You, uh, you don't have to, there's no competition, nothing going on. This is just an invitation for you to do this and to, to stay um, focused and with this topic. Bart, I see your message. I think we all have to go. Is it okay for you guys to round this off? Are there any final comments? Shall we go into the final comments and round this webinar off? Okay, any final comments? Please come out if you want to. Anila. Again, going back on what Tracy said, please reach out. If we don't know what help you need, it will be very difficult to, uh, to help you. Don't worry about how silly it may be. Believe me, you're looking at the person who comes up with the most silliest question, but I need them answered. And we're here to help you. So please, you can message us on the, um, the group or privately, whichever way you feel most comfortable, but please reach out. We're here for you. Thank you very much. Any final comments about anything else? Yes, Inna, come out. I've unmuted you. Hi. Hey. I just want, I, I just want to, to show you something. Can you see? You need to explain, I'm afraid. I am not afraid. Uh, um, um, I was so petrified um, to, to open my mouth and, and say something. And um, as you um, um, started uh, to ask questions, and you uh, and you um, um, uh, took uh, first Davy, and Davy was direct uh, uh, next to you, <laughs> next to me, uh, and I was so petrified that I must open my mouth. This is oh, it's incredible. Uh, it's not that I, I, I don't understand English. It's not that I, I don't know enough vocabulary. I was petrified to open my mouth. And, and here you are. And you did. And you did it without you, without the question. You came out yourself just now. I, I, I just uh, laughed as Frank uh, told uh, that uh, by a uh, momentum day uh, the, uh, that a fit uh, <laughs> uh, uh, as a, it's amazing but, uh, uh, what fear can do. It is amazing what we can do. And and and, and she and he uh, he said he uh, he he counted one two three four five and I wrote I am not afraid. <laughs> Yay! Because 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 I thought that I would be next that uh, gets the question. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry you didn't get the question for some nah, reason, no order. I but I was so petrified. <laughs> That's amazing. Can I, can I say something? You, you, you know, you have to count backwards. You have to count five, four, three, two, one. Yes. That's essential. That's, that, <laughs> that's the trick. Yes. <laughs> I will leave a link to the audiobook or to the YouTube. She did like loads of presentations on stage and she explains everything very well without you even having to read the book. But yeah, it's five, four, three, two, one. She explains why, why scientifically that is important to do. So I will leave a link or anyone else We'll leave a link so everybody can have a look into this as well. Inna, congratulations for coming out all by yourself. You could have, you could have not done it. Like the webinar was sort of. I know, and I know, but but doing this, being here, it means I must open my mouth. I must speak. You deserve it to speak up. The world needs you to speak up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there's a specific gift hidden inside of you, and, and this is what's going to unleash here. So you definitely, the, the world is waiting for you to speak up, desperately. And I hope. We really, we really want to acknowledge you for, for stepping out of your comfort zone. We know it takes freaking courage to do that. So acknowledge yourself. See? Acknowledge yourself for that. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, well done. And use us. Use this group to do so, Inna. I expect you every week on the webinar from now on. Yeah. Promise. <laughs> okay, amazing. Guys, 
the energy I get from this group every week is amazing. I was afraid I wasn't able to deliver value this week because now I felt it was like really starting and you were all waiting for what I was going to share with everyone. Everybody is equally contributing to this webinar and I'm so proud of us and I'm so happy to be in this group and to, and to be in your spe um, space. So thank you very much. We need, like, like who said it? Uh, I think it was Anila. We need everyone to contribute to this. We're this co-creating together. We're co-creating together. Absolutely, definitely. Yes. Thank you very much for your uh, presence this week. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Anila, for sharing your experience. Thank you, Inna, for speaking up. Thank you for everyone who answered the question I asked them on the spot. That was amazing. Thank you, Frank, for being here. Um, Thank you, Iska, for doing And me. you're very welcome. Very welcome. I'm just facilitating. You guys are amazing, okay? Just remind yourselves. You, I mean, it just really, we're, we're all dealing with it. The, the, the language thing just becomes another excuse why you can't. So don't let it become that, okay? Because we're all sitting in with our own stuff too when we sit there trying to make videos. I can attest to that. I'm, I'm one of the longest people going through the 90 day video challenge. <laughs> so, you know, don't, you know, you just stick with it and you keep going ahead. All right. So we're all here. Love you. Yeah. Thank you very much and see you yeah. next week, everyone. Yeah. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>